Hi everyone, it's Kim from Fleece and Harmony and this is episode 108 of our knitting and crochet podcast and we're recording this on uh, November, well you're going to look at it on November 11th 2022 and it's being recorded in our shop and our woolen mill on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. So welcome to everybody and if you've joined us before then you know what it's all about. If you haven't joined us before, this is a podcast where I talk about knitting. Uh, we talk about the yarns that we make here in our woolen mill and we talk about the animals on the farm and any other crazy thing that comes to our mind. So welcome if this is your first time. We always start with the farm update and that's what we're going to start with today. So we actually have a Houdini living on the farm, we found out. So I not quite sure how this happened, but one of the horses, per Perdita, and we call her Purdy for short, has to wear a halter outside because she only wants to get caught when she wants to. So she's a little bit temperamental. So we leave a halter on her all the time and we use a breakaway halter. So if she gets tangled in anything, then it, it snaps off, uh, it breaks, the halter breaks actually. So that's for safety so she doesn't get caught in anything and then is stuck struggling there because we have no choice we have to leave the halter on her and um she they're out in a huge field and she showed up for breakfast the other day with no halter and i that happens fairly regularly because like i said it's a breakaway so the minute she's got any kind of um any kind of strain on it it'll it'll break so I always go looking for the halter and I've got a bunch of pieces from different halters that have broken and I, uh, they all kind of break away in different places. So I save all those pieces and then I make more halters out of the pieces that I have from halters because it was getting pretty expensive buying a brand new halter every time when just one part of a strap broke or something like that. So we went for a hunt on the farm to find out where her halter might have been and it was laying uh, close to where we feed them in the mud all trampled over it's like she, and she got it off and it was like she stomped on it saying this <laughs> I don't want to wear this halter anymore and when I picked it up and brushed it off and I got ready I was going to recover the pieces that I could from it um, it was fully intact. So I don't have any idea how she got it off her head. And the only way that she would have been able to do that is if she had pulled it over her head and then it slipped off somehow. So I have no idea how she did that because usually it's broken. That's how it comes off. And it is pretty close fitting so we leave it a little bit looser maybe than you might normally because uh, we don't want it to catch in anything but we also don't want it to rub her anywhere since she needs to have it all the time on all the time and um, I have no idea how she got it off so we had just bought a brand new halter before we found the old one and um, so I, I don't know and the, like I said the only way that she could actually get it off is if she somehow managed to um, move it over the top of her ears and uh, she got it off so that's a mystery we'll probably find out somehow I don't know if she's uh, she's uh, motivated to get them off all the time and I just explain further why we need to leave it on is that it's for safety reasons so if she needs to be caught in the field for some reason if there was an emergency we need to be able to she's okay for you to clip the lead onto the halter but she just doesn't like you she's temperamental about when she wants to get the halter on some days she's absolutely fine she'll just let you put on the halter other days not so much and especially if um, there was a storm or something like that so the horses could get a little bit anxious you're not going to get a halter on her and if we had to move them in an emergency then uh, we need to have that that halter on but she gets them off fairly regularly and this time I have no idea how she got it off um, but she did and it's fully intact so now I have two two halters for her that's okay anyway so there was that that little um, piece of magic that happened on the farm um, the, I always talk about the weather so the weather in the last two weeks we've gone from 20 degrees Celsius uh, in one day last week to uh, two degrees Celsius last night 
We're still living in the wood tent because the insulation guys have not come yet. They're due to come on the 17th, so five more days. And uh, well, sorry, it'll be, it's a, it's a week now, but it'll be uh, just uh, six more days from when you're watching this. So we think it's gonna get pretty, pretty frosty because now we're actually having seasonable temperatures here. The good thing about it is that we're comfortably wearing our sweaters. The bad thing about it is that we need to wear two or three of them in the house to keep warm. And the wood stove is going like crazy, but it's a big house with no furnace. And the furnace guys are supposed to come this week. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, we have our new propane furnace installed, um, but still without insulation until the 17th of November. We do have a really good friend, um, Joanne, which you've probably heard me talking about. She's a, she started as just a, a customer that comes into the, into the store, but now she's a, she's a friend and she's away uh, visiting family. So she's grace, graciously offered her house to us uh, if we actually get to the point where there's icicles growing on the end of our nose, but our house should be back together by the time she gets back. I hope so um, so far we've been kind of like keeping our sense of humor about everything and making jokes about that we're pioneers and we feel like pioneers and there's I think I might have talked about this before there's a book that was written um, which is the voices and stories that some of the um, seniors of this area uh, they a woman went around and recorded some of the old timers and they were telling stories about living in Belfast early like early in the uh, 20th century and the, the one guy I can remember he said when he was a kid they would be uh, sleeping in their upstairs bedroom because you weren't next to the wood stove which would have been in the kitchen and seeing um, droplets frozen on spider webs in his bedroom we're not quite there yet but if it goes down another few degrees that actually might happen in my house <laughs> So we're really hoping we're so well we're so thankful that the weather is held out up until this point other than you know hurricanes and things like that which is still was still warm um, so we're really really hoping that the weather just holds out just a little bit a little bit more and uh, we get that insulation done and I think actually the wood stove is so efficient that I think it will actually keep the house pretty comfortable uh, if we just get the insulation in. So even if the furnace is late, then I think the insulation um, and the way that our wood stove works, it's so efficient that I think uh, it would actually keep the house warm once we get the insulation in. And that's not gonna be until November 17th. So <sighs> we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, we're just piling on sweaters. Speaking of sweaters, it's the perfect weather though for me to wear my Kate Davies Even Dune. I made this as part of the Kate Davies Cal knit along that we did, I think it's almost like two years ago now. And um, I, this is knit from Selkirk Worsted. And I just love this sweater. It's so cozy. And um, these batches of Selkirk Worsted that we've been uh, making since uh, for about two years now because of the, the farm where we're buying the um, fiber where we make that we use in the Selkirk Worsted. It's just, it's lofty and wooly like a, like a rustic wool like we love, but it has this kind of silky feeling to it. And, um, I just, it just feels really, really nice in, in this sweater. So this is Selkirk Worsted, Even Dune, Kate Davies. Um, the pattern is in her uh, 10 Years in the Making book, which is a fantastic book if you don't have it already. All of her best patterns that was celebrating her 10 years of knit designing. And while we're on the topic of Kate Davies, we also have her Sark book, which has just come out. Um, I showed it on the last podcast and I actually had a customer that came in and had knitted uh, two of the patterns from that book. Um, she had a pre-release of the, some of the patterns because um, uh, if you bought her own yarn, she had uh, offered a pre-release of the patterns like a kit, I think. And uh, Rachel, the, the customer brought in uh, two of the things that she had made from that book before the book was even published. And the twisted stitches, um, the pattern she said, Rachel said that the patterns are not super easy. It's not necessarily TV knitting because you have to kind of keep your wits about you 
as far as how following the pattern of those twisted stitches but i can tell you the items are just beautiful it's just really really beautiful so if you haven't checked that book out i did a slideshow in um, the last podcast so you can see the patterns and i did all the patterns that are in the book so you can um, check out episode 107 and uh, there's timestamps in the show notes so you'll be able to see where the kate davies sark uh, slideshow is but if you hadn't haven't seen it go back and check it out because it's really really excellent so um so we talked about the weather we talked about the horses and the sheep are all great they have really really woolly coats they're still actually eating grass in the fields because um, we haven't had any temperatures that have been below zero yet and we certainly don't have any snow or anything so with a warm spell that we had a week ago and then a couple weeks before that we had another warm spell the grass actually shot up again so it's pretty green and lush looking out there and we've had rain intermittently so the sheep are still grazing we are putting hay in their feeders just to supplement just in case uh, like they are grazing in a little bit shorter we also opened up a corridor to another field that had not been grazed at all last year so it's kind of like a store of winter food so we opened up that field but it's um, and they can walk right through there whenever they want the, the corridor that we set up with uh, electric fencing um, but it's a little bit of a distance from the, the barn so they don't really go that often but if they really want to eat fresh grass they'll all toddle down down there and uh, then they come back but they always come back really really close to the barn to sleep they sleep outside most of the time even though they have access to inside um, but they they are walking back and forth and traipsing all over the field which is great for them because that keeps them really uh, in good shape actually too so it's really good that they're they're wandering around they probably have access to about 20 acres of uh, pasture right now so um, even if the grass is not very high they're able to get uh, mostly enough to eat we have hay in their feeders as well and we're just going to look and see um, how they uh, if they eat that down or not i think what they're doing is they're eating all day out on the pastures and then they're coming to the feeders and when they need a midnight snack in the dark they're eating the hay out of the out of the feeders i think is what they're what they're doing so that's about it for the farm um, I don't have any finished objects and um, I'm not even showing my works in progress here because there's really nothing to show. I'm still knitting on my cowl cardigan. I did a couple little things on Paisley, but there's no difference. So I'm just going to talk about um, when we go, go to the segment with Betsy. I'm going to talk about my wallflowers and you'll be able to see that in that in that segment and again i always use timestamps on the video so if you want to skip to any um, section or any topic that i'm talking about i have a title and the timestamp so you can skip around and, and uh, get what you want i'm going to go now to the um, knit along that i talked about in the last podcast so this is a knit along that features the work of kristen drysdale who is known as scandy works on ravelry and instagram and and um, she uses her name and she uses scandy works um, so she as i said in the last podcast she has just published her hundredth pattern on um, Ravelry it's supposed to been posted on Ravelry and it is under you'll find the 100 pa patterns if you google or if you google if you search on her name Kristen Drysdale if you skirt search on Scandi works there's a few less patterns because she has published in Lina magazine and different different places so those um, patterns are not included in her work if you're if you're um, using the search term Scandi works but if you use the search term Kristen Drysdale you'll see all 100 of her patterns she just has an awesome catalog of patterns and all different things like big projects and small projects and complicated projects and easy projects and of course Kristen Drysdale is also the author of the Nordic Knitting Primer which came out um, last fall and this book uh, we just loved this book and if you follow I talked about it a couple pod in many podcasts but if you follow the book along you will actually um, learn 
different techniques to progress your color work uh, knitting. So what she does is she starts with easy patterns and you learn a couple techniques. Then if you go to the next pattern, there is a little bit more complex and you le learn other new techniques. And that's the way you follow through the, the, um, the knit Nordic Knitting Primer. So that's a great resource if you want to start doing color work knitting and you're a beginner because she really holds your hand as you go along. But she has so many beautiful patterns with all different skill levels and all different types of patterns that she's the perfect designer to follow for a knit along. So that's why I announced that uh, the last time. Do I, so I did start a Ravelry group um, or a chat in my, uh, in my group. There are two topics, uh, finished objects and big plans. So you can uh, go there to the Ravelry uh, community under Fleece and Harmony and check, uh, check in there and uh, talk about what you're going to make. Um, I have uh, made a decision about what I'm going to knit and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, and there is also a, um, a discount code in the show notes of this video which will give you 20% off of Kristen's patterns. Uh, it's a discount for Ravelry. So if you want to download um, any patterns or you make a choice out of, the, out of the patterns that she has there, there is a discount code that's in the show notes that you can see down below. The one thing is, is that the patterns from the book, the Nordic Knitting Primer, and there's a few, she's been published in Lina a few times. Those uh, patterns, I don't think the Lina patterns are available. Uh, I'll have to double, double check that, but I don't think the Lina patterns are available as a download directly from Ravelry as a single pattern. You'd have to buy the Lina magazine if you can get it. They've started to uh, um, stop printing some of them. Uh, and the Nordic Knitting Primer uh, patterns are not uh, downloadable from Ravelry either. So you have to buy the book to get those patterns. So just to, you know, for full disclosure, you'll have to check that out. But if you, if you think you're going to like color work Nordic Knitting, then the book is definitely worth it. So what I've decided to do is, so I've told you about the discount. So if you want to buy any of Kristen's patterns on Ravelry, you can buy them with a 20% discount code down below in the show notes. And um, if you want to, uh, if you wanted some inspiration, I've decided to do the list of five this week. And all five patterns are designs by Kristen Drysdale. So I tried to pick a variety of patterns. There's some that are from the Nordic Knitting Primer and there's some uh, that are just available on Ravelry singly. And I'm going to start with the very first one, which is um, it's going to be an obvious one. It's a pattern that uh, Kristen designed specifically to bring to the PEI Fiber Festival, which as we all know was had to be canceled more or less at the last minute because of Hurricane Fiona. Kristen had done a whole um, Instagram uh, series of posts on this because she actually knitted in a week. So it's pretty interesting actually to see, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if she did them all in stories or if they're on her grid, but it's, it's worth looking at it because she showed a progress picture for a week as she was knitting this, uh, this pattern. It was pretty, pretty amazing. I don't know how she did it. She was knitting so fast. Anyway, it's called the Lady Cordelia Cardigan and obviously Anne of Green Gables was her inspiration and if you have not read Anne of Green Gables or have not seen any of the uh, videos, um, this Lady Cordelia is the name that Anne, um, I guess she wishes that that was her name. <laughs> her name. She always has aspirations of being, you know, very romantic, and uh, she uh, she has a big imagination. And so, Lady Cordelia, the name Cordelia, uh, factors in the book quite quite a lot. And this cardigan is based on uh, and is very uh, whimsical about flowers and everything. So you can see the motif is flowers. It's a two color car cardigan, but you could actually do multiple colors. I just saw a post on Ravelry where somebody is um, uh, take, doing each of the lines of uh, flowers in different colors and everything. So it's, uh, she's just starting that project. So it's steeped um, in three places. 
so you steek the cardigan up the front and the sleeves are also steeked but if anybody's been watching for a while you you and you're still afraid of steeks don't worry there's nothing to be afraid of and if you knit it with the recommended wool which is selkirk worsted you really have nothing to be worried about because it is a wool that is lends itself perfectly to steeking it's just sticky enough that you don't have to worry about it unraveling and uh, you can steek without fear so the first thing on the first car, uh, selection on the list of five is the lady cordelia cardigan the next one is a pattern out of the nordic knitting primer and it is the swedish L lovka lovika a lovika mittens swedish lovika mittens i'm going to murder all these words <laughs> the scandinavian words so i just love these mittens and the way that they're knit is they are knit with a lopy yarn that's not spun so a pretty delicate yarn but it is um, a thicker yarn and i think you knit these mittens on a 4.5 mill a 4.5 millimeter needle i think but i'll uh, um i think it's 4.5 so it's a pretty thick yarn on a 4.5 millimeter needle and um, the way that these were designed was to use a lopy yarn because it's not spun and then you use a brush or a comb to comb to get that fluff that you see and i think they're i think they're felted i meant to look them up before i sat down to record but i forgot so i think that they're slightly felted and then um, you brush up the the nap with the the lopy so what I would say, and so they're knit all in one color and the trim around the cuff is actually embroidery. So you do a couple easy embroidery sh stitches. And um, if you're not familiar with the stitches that Kristen uses, then she does talk about them in the Nordic Knitting Primer as well. Um, so then I always, cause I always like to make a suggestion if for a yarn to use that is, um, within that I sell in my store, obviously. So I think you could make these out of, uh, brushed fleece. So the Rowan brushed fleece in Cove, and, um, that would be, that's a cream color. So you could use that. I think it would make a good substitute. And I would almost be tempted to hold, uh, cream, kid silk haze with it to get really get the fluff factor because I just find it just looks lovely and um, you could also use either our Selkirk worsted or our Aran you'd have to do a swatch in natural and I would use definitely use uh, kid silk haze held with that as well so I think if you use Selkirk worsted with kid silk haze held with it that you get somewhere around the gauge um, it would be a little bit thicker if you used Aaron, so you'd have to do a gauge swatch, but they would be lovely, lovely, thick and warm. So those are the two suggestions that I would make uh, for those mittens. And I just think they're just so romantic looking. <laughs> they're beautiful. I don't think I'd be carrying wood in with them, but anyway, that's the picture she, <laughs> she showed. Um, and her daughter made, she tells the story of that pat pattern, though her, her daughter made the, a lot of those mittens for her friends when she was 14. So I think it's, um, it, they look uh, pretty fancy, but I think that they must be, uh, her daughter is probably an accomplished knitter, but I think that you should be able to, uh, to make those if you have some knitting experience. The next on the list of five is the Maja Pullover. And this is also from the Nordic Knitting Primer. And it is the pattern that I've decided to knit as part of the cal. So um, I won't talk about it too much here because I'm gonna show you the colors that I've chosen to knit. Um, but the Maja Pullover was also knit by Janet who works here in the shop with us. And she used the Garfield Grizzly, which is a yarn that we don't always have, but you could substitute um, uh, Selkirk worsted for it. So the Garfield Grizz Grizzly is always a special spin and we have to make enough to accommodate Janet's knitting because she always buys yarn from that from that batch. She just loves to knit with that yarn. And Janet did kind of a low contrast uh, on this pullover and as you can see from the picture the contrast is not really um, not real too 
dark it is a little bit more muted and that's what I've decided to do as well so I'll show you I'll show you that in in a minute and um, the pullover is easily adapted to you can make it tunic length or you could make it a bit shorter but it does have a vent at the bottom which doesn't show on the picture so you do have that little bit of a split hem at the bottom of the of the pullover and um, it's it's just beautiful uh, Janet did hers uh, and I think I have a picture of it already so I'll dig that up and put it here somewhere but Janet um, did hers in cranberry with uh, it was either cranberry with oyster or seagull it might have been seagull and so it gives that low contrast that brilliant like just gorgeous cranberry red with the gray was was absolutely stunning and every time she wears it it's beautiful all over again and um, I'm going to uh, I'm, well I'll actually just show you now so what I'm going to pick I wanted I almost wasn't going to copy Janet because I just loved the richness of that but I've decided to do mine in these two colors so this is Selkirk worsted in purple coneflower and in lady slipper so the uh, lady slipper is the same uh, as what I uh, oh no sorry this is me uh, no, it's Lady Slipper, which I have here in uh, my Even Dune. And uh, the purple in my sweater is Amethyst Brooch. And purple coneflower was part of the amethyst gradient that we did. And the beginning of the gradient at going from the darkest to the lightest was uh, Amethyst Brooch, which is a really, really dark purple. And purple coneflower was the next shade down. So I purposely chose um, something that was not as dark as Amethyst Brooch because I wanted a little bit less contrast with my two colors. So I'm going to have Purple Cone Flower and then the contrast will be Lady Slipper. So May Flower is the lightest in that gradient and um, Lady Slipper is the second one up from the bottom. So the second lightest. And so I've taken the second, um, the second darkest and the second lightest and I put those two together to make uh, that sweater. And I haven't knit, I love purple. I absolutely love it. And I haven't knit with purple in a long time. So um, I'm really happy and I have to say, I'm really happy that I'm going to be knitting something with my own yarn, you know, my own yarn, because it just, it is, I, I, I'm saying it and I make it, but it's, it's really such a lovely yarn and it knits up fairly quickly. So I'm really happy uh, that um, I'm going to be doing a project with that. So I'm going to do the Maja pullover, which is pattern number three in the list of five. So um, that's that. I'm just going to set that over here. Back to the list of five. So the next uh, pattern that I want to talk about on the list of five is the Soren slippers. And um, Kristen has a whole um, portfolio of different types of, of these Scandinavian slippers. And uh, I picked the Soren slippers because first of all, it's not in a book in the patterns not in a book. So it's available on Ravelry. It's six dollars US, I think, which will come out to around nine fifty or ten dollars Canadian. And um, I just loved the heel and the uh, sole of these slippers. Uh, most of the patterns, I think all of them have the the um, Scandinavian braid on the top, which I just love. And uh, I just, she knit these slippers, um, what she talks about it in the pattern, she did actually used Selkirk worsted to knit these slippers and then she used heavier yarns and a lighter yarn. So she's got three different yarns that she's suggesting to knit them on, on Ravelry. So, but I know for sure you can make them out of um, Selkirk worsted. And it takes one skein of each, so the two, the main color and the contrast color, and then, um, but you have enough yarn in those two skeins to make two pairs of slippers. So you could, um, you could do two, two pairs of slippers, and you're in time for Christmas if you want to give them as, as gifts. So I just, uh, I, they're all of the slipper patterns that she does are really, really cute, but I just really thought that these were, were lovely and she had done them in Selkirk Worsted um, as well. So there's a reference to Selkirk Worsted there on the Ravelry um, uh, entry that she's made. 
And the fifth thing that is in the list of five is the large, Lars Burge, Burge, <laughs> Lars, Lars Burge pullover. This is a traditional Scandinavian design. It has a little bit of a split at the neck with a, a yoke, a, a colored yoke, a color work yoke. I chose this one because you have all the elements there. You have a yoke, but it's not an all over pattern. It's just in the yoke. It's a simple uh, two color sweater and you have a little bit of a V there that you can put one of those beautiful Norwegian clips on or the Scandinavian clips. And um, then the rest of the sweater is stockinette. And I just find it's um, so classic and it is something that's totally um, can be accomplished by most skill, like most skill levels of knitting. And it just kind of epitomizes the whole Scandinavian design aesthetic. So I really, really just liked it. And I was almost tempted to actually do this one for myself as well. But I decided I wanted to actually use the Nordic Knitting Primer book because um, I know there's lots of valuable uh, information in it. So I've made made my choice with the with the Maja. But this is uh, just a beautiful, beautiful pullover. And it's uh, I think it's named after her grandfather because she usually links the names of her patterns to um, places or people in her life um, giving homage to her Scandinavian background. So the large Lars, I always want to say large, Lars Burge pullover. I don't, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to have a chat with Kristen at some point and get a little bit of a, a Scandinavian lesson on pronunciation. <laughs> anyway, this is it. And exceptionally, I have one bonus, um, one bonus uh, item on the list and it's the Ingrid mittens. So these are fingerless mittens that go up quite high and I'm putting this bonus in here because they are, uh, it's also out of the Nordic Knitting Primer, but they were designed using Selkirk worsted. And I'm just gonna show them here but I'm uh, talk. I'm going to talk about them more in the shop update because we've actually done a kit for these because there are quite small quantities of the two contrast colors, and um, we're always happy to do kits so that you don't have to buy three full skeins and only use a few yards of one of the accent colors. So we've done that, and I'll show it in the shop update. So that's the list of five plus one. And um, give, I hope it gave you good inspiration for the knit along. I haven't, um, I think we'll go till April for the, the knit along and um, it starts now. So if, you, uh, if you've been inspired and you've gone and checked out Kristen Drysdale's uh, Ravelry page, um, get your pattern sorted out and uh, join, uh, join me for that. And uh, I'm going to cast on uh, probably this weekend. So that'll be great. I'm really looking forward to that. So next we're going to go and visit with Betsy or Betsy's coming here to visit with me. And we're going to talk about, um, this it's, we're talking about the wallfall hour section, but this time actually there's not a lot of progress to show on the wallflowers. Betsy is in full production mode doing the outside of her blanket. I have filled my void. So you're going to see my, my progress on that. And now after the void was filled, then I had to go into production uh, as well, trying to get like, a I don't know, hundreds of popcorns done. Not really hundreds, but I'm doing pebbles and popcorns. So there's not a, a lot to show except that I've finished my, my void. We talk a little bit about um, the what Betsy's doing next but Betsy as always has several projects on the go so she will talk about um, her project she gives an update on the two wraps that she's doing one out of Point Prim Sock Yarn and the other one out of Alpaca Classic from Rowan and uh, we have a good chat about Selbu mittens so um, we have a we have a really good chat about that so <laughs> check that out in the next section. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Kim. <laughs> I left a little bit of space that time. Oh, there we go. And because my transitions are running into my hi, Betsy. So sometimes it's, eh, oh. Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> this way you can edit it yes. nice and, and cleanly. Yes, we'll yeah. have room. We'll have room. So how are you this week? Good. Good. I do think we have to talk about the weather. You may have already. Yes. But 
it's changed today. Yes, look yes. at us. We had this comfortable. Long, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> comfortable in our woolens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not boily. So we had this long, extended, warm fall where we were continuously sweating as we did these. And now today we woke up and it was windy and cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're yeah. not quite minus yet. But not quite, like, yeah. but there was kind of icy rain this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Just for a second. That's true. Ken shouted out, it's snowing. And yeah. we're all like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it was. And, and then what did I say? Because I had two bad horses this morning That's that I right. was going to put rain sheets on and they took off. So now they're going to be sorry. <laughs> Is that what my parents say to kids? Yeah. 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 I was like, you'll you sound be sorry. Like a mother of toddler. You should have put your mittens on. Yeah. I told you to wear your mittens. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So oh. they're going to be a little shivery tonight. Oh, okay. I think. But they have their winter coats. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they'll so be okay. they'll, they'll yeah. be okay. It's not, it's actually, it's not really as cold as it seems because it's the wind. Yes. It's, it's the just, wind yeah. is crazy. I have a little yeah. bit of PTSD when I hear the wind. It's weird. I agree. I was actually thinking that this morning because I woke up and I heard things rattling and shaking, which they did last yeah. fall all the time. But yeah. now it's kind of like you're just waiting to almost hear pieces of something blowing around. Yeah, so, yeah. or a tree yeah. come down. Yeah. Or your power go out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, well, we shouldn't we'll dwell on this. No, yeah. no. We don't okay. want to send that energy around. No, exactly. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's just normal PEI autumn wind. It just took a little while. After, thankfully, gave us yeah. a great big break between Fiona and moving in. Great for weather winter. for cutting trees up and stuff. Yes. Yeah. PEI is the third windiest province in Canada. When we were moving here, my father in law said, it's windy all the time. And I was like, oh. This, because I'm not super fond of heavy wind. It, oh. it messes with your hair. Yeah, <laughs> you should have saw me when oh. I came over, right? Yeah. But I came over from the house and I was, uh, literally the wind blew me in yes. at the door. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, All right. what have we been up to with well, knit and crochet? Not much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, yes, we have. We're done with, okay. been doing work. True. Well, you were saying, so another thing we should mention as well here in PEI, we still follow the whole daylight savings time thing. Yes. Um, so this weekend we fell back, which right. means we get a little bit more light in the morning, but less light in the evening. So now, for example, we're recording this. It's about 5 p.m. in the evening and it's dark. Yeah. That's yeah. right. But this morning at quarter to seven, it was light. It was light. Where yeah. it was kind of the opposite. Yes. The, and then, and I'm not sure one is better than the other. I'm not sure either. <clears throat> so yeah. we were sleeping in later. Yeah. So now we're up bright and early. So we were out doing the chores at seven okay. this morning as soon okay. as it got light. And, uh, but I'd prefer to have light when I'm trying to do my wallflowers. That's what you were saying. Yes. So <laughs> last night I had to go to extreme measures because I wanted to finish something for today. Ken took a picture. I'm going to show it here. Okay. I'm curious to see what she did. You don't know what it is. No. Yes. I'll tell you later. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So yeah. that's my working conditions. Okay. It's like the workhouse in the, in the 1800s. <laughs> Except I don't think they had headlamps then. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not, like, like a miner, only I'm working oh. on wall, wall flowers. You're crocheting instead <laughs> yeah. of digging. Yeah, oh, exactly. Dear. Oh, okay. So I did get my homework done. Well, I haven't done a whole lot on mine. So as far as like actually bringing my wallflower. Yeah. This I, is what I brought of my wallflowers right. in the bag. So I've gone back into production mode. So I'm just making... Oh, they're really light. And mm. less, yep. So those are some of like, because mine is now moving to my lightest color. So and is this scree? Scree is the little blue in the middle, right? Okay. And clay is my that's lightest. That's clay? No, maybe it's not. Maybe that's, yeah, that's clay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I can see uh, what you were saying in the last podcast. You were talking about like a little blushy color. It's it. the, the screen does have yeah. it. And the clay looks like it does too. But That's it could be I mean. just the lighting in here. Who knows? Nice. Um, I oh. think I saw it that way at my house too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. So there's a ton of these to make. And then how many, Betsy? Them. How many do you have to make? Oh, okay. So I think it's I don't look 40 ahead. some out of these yeah. and then another color shift the opposite so the the gray in the middle the blue on the outside I don't have one okay. here with me another like 24 of those and then I think the title of the next chapter or like the the paragraph that it begins with is something is like okay people now it's time to test you let's keep going oh boy and then there's like 
64 oh. more puffs or something. Okay. So. so I have yeah. a little question for you. Sure. Because this is a, this is a puff, right? Yes, it's a puff. So somehow my puff is puffier on the bottom than it is on the top. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm almost tempted to do them inside out. But it could be see. maybe a left hand, right hand. Like yours are yours are definitely puffed on top. What do you mean? You on can't the... see. Like see how you're. Maybe I'm not tight That's enough. That's the on back it. side that you're looking at there. Oh right. So yeah, it's puffier on the back. On the back side. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Oh yeah. So they're the Prob same. Maybe by the time we. Mm. You know what it is? It's probably that we're pulling a little. So when we're closing the puff. Yeah. We're pulling a little too tight potentially yeah maybe so it's kind anyway. of folding it forward right rather than nobody can see I any of this think. but yeah. we're, <laughs> we're obsessing about it tiny details the puff here. is kind of like not super puffy it's puffier on the back yeah i was almost tempted so you could go. just when you insert them I was just I was put tempted them in upside down. I was tempted, except you can see the little bumps on That's the ring. That's true. But you I'll just could do it on the wrong side. Or you like could you just do the call, pebbles. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Or you could I'm just call practice. that like detailing. I don't yes. Know. Yeah. <laughs> too de too many details. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. I so guess I have at. to bring the raw the wow factor yeah. to this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my void is filled. And thank you. I forget who the na the name is that said that uh, about her void being filled over and over again. Yeah. Thank you. I laughed so hard that morning that I read that. I was, was like, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> no. So now my void is actually is filled. filled. Okay. And I'm disappointed. Oh. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, so, tell us why. Okay. Because see those purple. This is bilberry in in uh, felted tweed, the purple one, which is one of my absolute favorite colors yeah. in felted tweed, and I'm not sure that I like it. No. Yeah. So I'm hoping, and you're going to tell me because you're further than me, is that when I start putting that on the outside of this, then it makes this all make sense. Well, I think I said the same thing when I filled my void because it suddenly felt like such a big contrast. Yeah. In your case, it was lighter. It was significantly yeah, we'll lighter. Yeah, show a picture of your yeah. blanket while we're... So I think I felt similar to what you are where I thought, does this really all go together? Is this going to work? Yeah. Um, but by the time, because I think you said this purple yeah. will now be what's right next in the so. next round. Yeah. It'll be the background to some of your flowers, right. puffs, right. popcorns, whatever they are, and the next round. Right. Um, in which case, it'll flow from this one to this. I don't know. Yeah. I say, hang on, stick with the process, yeah, I have see how along. it's going to go. It's funny because I felt the same way about the peach. Right. And now I don't, now the peach is fine. Works. Yeah. But, all right. Anyway, so that's, uh, so that's it. So that's why. Last night I was in. I can tell you when you're working with the black and these dark grays, you really need light. That's, and you're going darker and darker with every step now. I know. Oh. You really need light. Okay. Although the headlamp really was the key to success. To it. Now, your house will eventually have more lighting, right? Sometime, but not... Not, <laughs> not any time this winter. Not any time this winter. Oh. Uh, yeah, it will. It'll come. It will. It will. But you need like a really... Uh, for the black especially, I find that I need it like a really clear light like the lights that we have in the house I like yellow toned lights in the house I find it cozy okay so I don't have like a lot of white light, light. yeah I, I remember when we were selling our last house our real estate agent came in to help us stage and she had me switch out all my light bulbs to those ones they called daylight light bulbs okay which to me just felt like blaring like yeah. I could not handle it. As soon as the place was sold, I went and switched them all back. Because oh, I'm similar yeah. to you. I like a softer, warmer light yeah. as opposed yeah. to daylight. However, yeah. I agree, when you're knitting or crocheting with dark yarn, yeah. being in actual daylight yes. makes That's it significantly right. yeah. so easier. So I've been, I've been getting up in the morning, okay. like a, doing a little bit, uh, a little bit since right now, since we're out doing the chores at 7, I came in and actually got some... Some stuff done. Production yeah. stuff, because I'm mostly doing production now, yeah. too, on yeah. the other side. Yeah, you'll switch back again to, well, no, you're going to head into some bigger flowers now. So yeah, they'll take, I got those giant. They take giant. a little longer to do. Yeah. But when you put them in, 
all of a sudden you feel like you've oh, completed a whole bunch. Oh, yes. Okay. Because so you're, not these little, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because then your round is like this thick. Yeah. So, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. good things. Good times coming. They're coming. Yeah. Okay. So and doesn't it, it feel good to just have it like all together. one piece? Yes. Yeah. It is a milestone. Yeah. Just like, just like Sue so. said. Yes. I think so. So this is the wallflower section, but that's all we're going to talk about. For the wallflowers, yeah. Yeah, so we got other stuff to talk <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we do. We got other things to talk about. Yeah. So we're just going to put this little baby away. Right. And, uh, and I, you have to figure out when you're doing it how to move it around on the table, too. Eh? It gets a little bit. It's a shift. Yeah. 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 But I finally got that I just figured it rotate it like yeah know, like exactly. pizza or something yeah. so well okay. i'll carry on with crochet because we're yes. kind of in that okay. crochet section so i finally remembered to bring my little friends back oh so yes you have met her earlier but i don't think she had a name she's now called louisa louisa so we have louisa okay. is she spanish i don't know kind of looks no. kind of has that vibe and then oh. her her friend chester chester <laughs> okay. so did she have the little cat ears i can't closet? remember you folks tell us. Yeah. Have you seen the cat's ears? I think maybe, but I can't remember yeah. for sure. She's very cute. So some of that is to please my youngest daughter, who's just cat crazy, and she loves them. Other part of it is the original pattern had fox oh, ears. Oh, okay. And it was made out of, like, fox colors, okay. oranges and browns. Okay. But when I switched it to blues, I think it does read more kitty cat yeah. than it does. Yeah. Yeah. So she's been done for a while. She got a little bit of a face. Yeah. Um, they had a mouth for two days or so, but it looked really awkward. Oh. So I just told, pulled it back out again. Oh, okay. I had just done, like, a little embroidered stripe. It, right. The mouth really, like... I don't know. It's hard for to get the right placement, I found. Oh, okay. So, and she's got yeah. a little blush. Yes, they have. Both of them do. And what do you do that with? I did it with actual blush. Oh, okay. So I have heard some people say that they'll use um, water paint or an acrylic paint even. Right. But I was really worried to put paint on it. I thought, if I don't get it right the first time. Yeah. So I just did a little bit of blush. Yeah. Cute. Where if you did wash it, that would disappear. Well, then but you I'm can not. just reapply. Yeah. <laughs> reapply your blush. Okay. <laughs> but Cute. these aren't really, for me, these guys are little decor. They're not really yeah. toys. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got his little shoes, which are fully removable. Yeah. Um, Cute. Which I adapted from another pattern, um, Elias and Jin, the polar okay. bear and um, bird that I've talked about before, I think, Johan made designs, does them. So I just adapted her shoe pattern. Okay. The overalls I just kind of made up, and the jacket I just sort of made up as I went along. So he's actually got little buttons, little oh, snap buttons. Yeah. Where did you get those? His, they're just snaps. Oh, snaps. Yeah. Cute. Little okay. snaps. Don't need yeah. a little trim there. Yeah. He's got little back pockets on the wow, back of his Wow, lots of detail. Jeans. I'd still like to give him maybe like a little hook um what do you call and that and so you just made up the jacket i just made it up yeah so yeah some, sometimes i hate you just a little bit <laughs> ouch <laughs> no the thing is i have done so much crochet and i have to remind myself of that sometimes when i'm knitting because i'm like why can't i do this with knitting and then i go because the hours and hours and hours yeah that i have crocheted mean. compared to knitting mm -hmm. like i'm just not there yet so yeah. i have hope that one day put in the time yeah, yeah. exactly yeah what is it they say Ten thousand hours makes you a master I don't of know. any yeah i think that's what they say some days it feels like i'm getting close no. yeah <laughs> Ten thousand hours is <laughs> to it. yeah allows you to be a master of, of something you know okay. yeah you well, know jack of all trades master of none you have oh. to put in your ten thousand mm. hours okay <laughs> <laughs> so that's chester and louisa they're cute. So they sit on my fireplace mantle. put a little mantle. snap on their hands so they can be. Well, when they're sitting on the mantle, yeah. they, they they're hold holding hands. hands. Yeah. Oh, or I have a little cute. candy dish that sometimes he's like Has his hand the in the candy the, dish. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're really cute. And yeah. the name of the pattern again? It's, Am I putting you on the? Yeah, we'll have to add it. It's green frog crochet. Okay. Actually, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's okay, exactly perfect. what it is. Okay. Yeah. So that's and those. And then you have two more things. I do. So I'm also working on the patty wrap yes. by Rowan, um, which... It always makes me ha feel like it, you're going to talk about a pa uh, hamburger. A patty, patty wrap. wrap. <laughs> a hamburger. 
patty wrap. Yeah. Mm, no, nope, I'm not getting hamburger vibes, but we'll have to make one called the patty wrap just for Kim. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, right. yeah. So it's the, okay. oops, it's hooked there. It, um, I'm really liking it. Mm -hmm. It's great colors. It's going to feel really nice. Though. I think so. I yeah. love this color. Like I love, I mean, it's on my shirt. It's in my other shawl. It's here. Yes. I call it one of my soul colors. Yeah. I think my beautiful. soul might be that color. I don't know if that's a bad thing for those of you who Do understand color, more of color that. Stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not me. It's nice. But yeah. And I said this before, but I love it next to this green. Yeah. The, the moss really green. Nice. Yeah. Um, what I'm enjoying about it too is, so the first time I went through that each of the colors are not all of the colors are different patterns but some of them are different patterns and uh it took me a bit to like i was reading the pattern line by line each one and it was i was stumbling on that because just remembering which line i was on oh, okay. was tricky but now that i'm into the i think i'm in the third repeat i actually can read the, the knitting, knitting. Yes. which is i'm really working hard at I want to conquer that skill so that I can read the knitting so I don't have to try to read patterns. Because right. when I try to read pattern line by line, I make mistakes. Yeah. Every yeah. time. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, we talked about this before, I think. Maybe. on Well, I've talked about it on the podcast at okay. some point. It might have been like a long time ago. But there is like the two types of knitting. And there was a really good article that was written about it. And I tried to look up the article and I can't oh, yes. find it anywhere. Yeah, do you do remember, remember that? that? I remember you talking about the article that you couldn't find. Yes, and yeah. I actually did like a deep dive trying to find that article because I thought it was fascinating because it's people that can, that um, I was pretty sure that they said like architectural minds and oh, okay. so whatever. And one type could read charts easily, but right. couldn't read their knitting. Okay. And then the other type were more kind of well, I wouldn't call it intuitive because they were just reading the knitting and then could figure out the patterns. So, and they said one's not better than the other. Just because you have to, you have to learn the pattern from a chart or a pattern right. first. And then if you can read your knitting after, then that's good. So yeah. you sort of should try to develop both skills. But well, and it certainly really makes it easier to fix mistakes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the key, the hardest one I think for me, the, um, the checkered pattern was pretty easy because that's pretty obvious when right. you go off. Right. The hardest one was this little slip stitch. Yeah, it looks a little here. bit like a scale though. I really, similar. really like it. Yeah. I really nice. do. So I really love it in the blue. Yeah. But, and if you look closely, you'd be able to tell that sometimes I get off. Oh yeah? Where I'm not, because it's supposed to be opposite, right? So that you're building like the brick Oh, pattern. okay. But every once in a while, I get a wrong line. Oh, okay. But it's pretty, I don't think, yeah. when it's wrapped around my neck, again, my motto in life, if yeah. you're that close, <laughs> It shouldn't be that close. You're too close. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, you, would yeah. Know, you wouldn't notice it. Okay, but I love the color com combination, which I did make a few changes, and we talked about that previous right. too. So this dark color is not in the original. That's Eclipse, Eclipse. which is a navy. Yeah. And yeah. it should be the darkest gray. What's that one called? The darkest gray. Um, gray melange. Yes. Yes. That's what they had called for in yeah. theirs. So I just switched that out. Yeah. And did that. All instead. right. Yeah. It feels really nice. It this is, is so alpaca classic. It's cushy. a nice, yeah, it's a nice yarn. I yeah. am curious to see. So my most sensitive part when I'm wearing wool is my neck. Okay. Um, so I'm curious to see when I put alpaca on my neck, if I will feel any bit of a prickle factor. Oh, okay. Because would you say that, I think I've seen or heard other people say that alpaca can be a little more prickly than some uh, wools. I think some people are just more sensitive to it. Okay. And then it doesn't yeah. really, it's, it has to be, uh, it, it's not the fineness of the, everybody talks about how fine fiber is and that's right. supposed to be better, but it's, it's um, the length of the fiber and the stiffness of it, even if it's fine, that makes it prickle. Right. So even something that's very fine and technically soft with a low micron count, can still be prickly, so it just uh, it just yeah. depends. But I don't find my rain sweater prickly at all. But I'm not really a good example because I'm wearing wool okay. next to my skin, and it doesn't doesn't bother, doesn't bother me. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm mostly okay, like on sort of main parts, of right? It. But it's in like so like here in the crook of my right. elbow when right. my arm is bent on it, I oh, will okay. feel some prickle sometimes, and on on my neck tends to be an area, but. I love wool enough. 
I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the other yeah. other benefits outweigh the exactly. little bit of a prickle factor. The yeah. only time I think that I it would really bother me is when if I'm outside and I'm working hard like snowshoeing or skiing and I start to sweat. Oh, then okay. I'll feel a little bit more itchy with it. Oh, okay. Um, and sometimes I have to kind of like open See, up. Then, I'm not, I don't. I try not to sweat. <laughs> Avoid all those because, activities. You, I was just gonna say because you don't sweat because you're a lady, no. or because you're like I no. don't want to work that hard. No, 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 I'm just avoiding all those activities. The but truth no. is, I don't have to work very hard to start sweating. Oh, okay, all right. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my genetics. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Um, I do have one more. Yeah. Knitting project. The I'm the calling it cake. cake. Yeah. yeah. We're just gonna call it cake. So this is again the one out of our sock yarn. That's the technically the back side, but we're trying to go with we don't have a back side right. or a front side. Right. Um, so that's working it on the diagonal. Ah, cool. Um, which is fun. I'm really enjoying it. This is perfect TV knitting. Oh, good. Because there's not really anything to mess up. Um, and what I've been doing with the striping, so to kind of decide how wide do I make my stripes, I was I took this one to my daughter's um, volleyball game. They were both on their school volleyball team. So I decided, okay, in this set, I'll knit this color. And then when that set's over, I'll knit the next color. Oh, okay. So if I was really good and one of those like super keepsake memory people, I'd probably have a journal that would go with it and I would have written down like whether they won the set or lost the set oh and I'd have put the score. I was having all these, I was like, oh, these would be really cool ideas, but I didn't follow through on oh, any okay. of that. Good. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> More pressure. Yeah. But I, you could do that though. Like yeah, a knit, you could. A knit journal. Yes. You know, it's Remembrance Day when we're uh, showing this uh, video yes. and yeah. did you know that Knitting was, uh, they passed messages through knitting objects. Wow. Did you know about that? I did not know about okay. that. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, I always talk about something for Remembrance Day and okay. I didn't do any research on this to, but this will be what I'll, so yeah. the people's knitting, talking about reading your knitting, you really, they were like certain pat, knit pearl, knit pearl, it meant something. I think they were doing like Morris code or something like it that in the. It could totally be yes, code. Yes. Yeah. And they were passing wow. messages. Well, didn't someone, someone designed a sweater that I think is, you put Morse code in it. So, oh, yeah. Well, um, maybe. The, I just know, because I, when I was in London, I followed the, the Forest City Knit ladies. Right. And I think they all made that sweater. Oh, where okay. in the yoke of it, you actually, like, Morse code using pearl and knit. Right. Different messages in. So you oh, could put okay. family members' names. Oh, or, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, well, okay. so they did that. They actually that's, did that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's cool. Now, presumably, they'd have made the code a little more complicated, I think. Than I just don't know. Well, who would who figured it out that they were doing, doing I guess, I guess they had a, I don't know if it was, I don't really, I shouldn't have even mentioned because I don't really know enough about it, but I do know that they were sending messages in their knitting. Right. Well, yeah. something to go look up and find yes. out more about. Yes, so, you can. Yeah, that's you fascinating. Can do that. Yeah. yeah. So this is cake. It's coming along fine. It's my Beautiful. when I don't want to think, but I still want to knit. Yeah, kind of thing. And so, it yeah. uh, feels really nice. Oh, right? we should say the colors because it's our yarn. Yes. Um, so the blue is cotton candy. Cotton candy, and the uh, variegated is Ferris wheel. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got the little spots are coming yes. out on it. I it's really nice. really like so it. So last time we talked about the stitches. So you decided to go with um, it's garter, but because it's on the diagonal. So it's garter on the Ferris wheel. So okay. the, the white with the spots, the variegated one is garter, but this one is seed stitch. Seed stitch. The okay. Blue is seed stitch. And they I look different have. when it's on the diagonal, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. Yeah. They really do. Yeah. I'm not fond of garter horizontally. Yes. Um, but it's growing on me, which is good, because if you want some mindless knitting, garter Garters. really is the way to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So, you. And you're going to make it quite long, right? I think I'm going to either go till I use up all five skeins of yarn that I bought, right. unless that gets ridiculous. But I'm almost at the end of the blue. Okay. So I have three blue and two of the variegated. Okay. So... Yeah, either that or the, the patty wrap has me going till it's about 85 inches, I think. So mm -hmm. I thought maybe I'll see what that is. and You know what, this would be really nice with a fringe too. What? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I was think... thinking maybe I-cord, but hmm. like like a fringe on the, what, the yeah. two ends. Yeah, and You're you could do all right. 
Yeah, you could do the blue with the little pops of the Ferris wheel. Like it. Yeah, it would be really nice. I like it. I love fringes. Okay, yeah. you might have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it'll give it a nice defined end. Yeah. Because the, like it's a, it'll wrap round and round however yeah. many times. And I like yeah. that idea. Yeah. And see kind of. Yeah. You know, that's that that's what inspired in. me. <laughs> Too bad you, they weren't already over there. No, <laughs> it doesn't already. work that way. No, but yeah. yeah, very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Good. So that one's a fun one, and that's. My knitting. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. I guess we were going to chat a little bit about the Selbu. Oh book. yes. Okay. Because you've actually read the book. Uh, well, let's say <laughs> I've read the first like part that has all the kind of like historical information. Right. So I haven't read the book. I just read that one part about one of the knitters. But right. so why don't you tell everybody a little, a little bit, bit about, about the book? Yes. Sure. So I think um, what's fascinated me most about it, or what I kind of like jumped out and grabbed me, is how much respect they mm -hmm. had for knitting. So to the point where they actually like made some laws right. about it. And then they formed this whole committee that was in control of um, quality control. Okay. So you had to submit. And this was in Norway. Yes, right? sorry, yeah. yes, we didn't clarify mm -hmm. that. This is in Norway in the 19... 30s, I yeah. wanna say. I could be wrong on that. I shouldn't do dates, I'm terrible with dates. Yeah. Um, but in that sort of earlier mm -hmm. term, time of the 19th century. And um, so they were selling these mitts for livelihood. The ladies would make them um, and were being they were being sold. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to guarantee the quality going out. Anything that was actually like trademarked a selbu mitten right. had to be handed in to this, I'm gonna slaughter this pronunciation, but we'll say Husfliden oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> committee that would basically like check their quality and if it didn't match there were several different things that were laid out oh, for wow. them and if okay. it didn't match it got like you couldn't sell it under the selbu name oh um, okay it was they were trying to ensure that anything sold under the selbu name met this trademark wow. so okay. it was yeah that was like, pretty, it was pretty serious intense. then so it's it not just patterns about no. motifs and stuff it was and a the, whole yeah sorry I'm no that's off. right no and the the motifs had to like be complete motifs and if your motif didn't work out properly to be finished that was no good. Oh, so you okay. had to do your gauge swatch and figure out your stitches so that you would be completing your motif by the time you got to the top, and it was a proper finish of it. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. It was it was intense. No, like fading out of the song. No, you had to have <laughs> <laughs> you had to have planned it all out, and you um, brought in some of the needles they were working on. Yeah, which were sizes. Remind me again. Yeah. So I had a customer asking me about because this is all because of the wild. Well, the wild wind two ply is all because of the Selbu Mitten book because I was inspired to make that yarn which is selling like crazy <laughs> so uh, thank, thank you, you to everybody that <laughs> yeah. purchased it, it was, it's really it's going really well and uh, we still have some left don't worry and uh, so it all kind of went full circle so then somebody was asking me about the needles to knit one of the pair of mittens that is in the size of yarn that I made there's two two different sizes of yarn and I made the finer one and I was like oh my goodness we don't even have needle sizes that small so it's going to be when you knit them if you're knitting to the gauge that they knit it's going to be look like machine knitting yeah it's, it's tiny it's was tiny. it like a how many millimeters? So there, it goes down to, I. so then I fell down a rabbit hole <laughs> about trying to find these fine needles. And actually, um, Knitter's Pride Carbons are the needles that I found in, within my group of suppliers that, right. I, that I get that do, because Chiago doesn't go down that small. Yeah. They go to two millimeter and that's it. Okay. And the carbons come in, I think it's five zeros US like five so it's one millimeter and then they have 1.25 1.5 a lot of the mittens are knit in 1.5 millimeter needles and um so i just bought i the ones were actually short shipped but i have the 1.25 1.5 and 1.75 so up to two where then i have chiagos so we'll see how how it goes but they're really tiny i want to give it a try but I, yeah. I'm worried I might never finish that knit. <laughs> so they have, uh, I, I bet you that there's as many stitches in one of those mittens at that size almost as in a, a not, not quite a scarf or, or a sweater, but it's going to be a lot. Maybe like in an Aran sweater. 
I don't know. Like, well, chunky sweater for sure. We'll have to it figure be it out. Actual... We'll have to do up a swatch and yeah, then check yeah, the gauge. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah. And uh, the literally, I ha I can hardly wait till I get the, I'll get the ones in at some point with the one millimeter. So five US zeros, <laughs> like whatever it is. It's, I don't know how they call it in the US, right. US five zeros. And um, it, the, the four zeros, four zero, four zeros, I guess that's how they say it. Triple, quadruple zero. I, I don't know. I don't know. The quintuple zero and quadruple. So the four zeros, which is 1.25 millimeter, yeah. it actually looks like a pencil lead. It's really tiny. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this was like their required gauge that they were supposed to be yes. making to, to meet these. So then on top of like for selling them, then they also had these like crazy expectations on brides. Right. So I think it was her responsibility to not only knit her bridegroom's special mittens, mm -hmm. and there's also rules all about like female mittens versus male mittens. Uh, there was all kinds of expectations that went with that, which go ahead, you can do what you want these days. Right. <laughs> but um, so she had to knit his special pair of mittens. And then I believe she was expected to knit also all of the groomsmen's oh. stockings and oh. these special mittens. Okay. And then there was also something about, so each of the guests would knit a pair of mittens and would bring them to the wedding to give away. But it was the bride's responsibility to remember as they came in the door and showed each pair of mittens to her, she had to remember who's made those mittens so that when she was giving them out, she gave them to that person's significant other. Oh so my like goodness. she might okay. have upwards of like 80, 100 pairs of mitts that what? she had to memorize. And it was her responsibility to make sure that the right pair of mittens went to with whoever actually made them, made them for their significant other. So it was just like, there's some really intense cultural, traditional, um, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to come rules up with. And rules and, and just that went around this. So I think what I appreciated from it, although it sounds like crazy. I, you know what I think? I think that was just a contrived plan so that they didn't get married too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that would slow you down. Yeah. That's for sure. Because I'm sure some of them didn't make it to the finish line. To the, oh my goodness. No. Yeah. So, yeah. But just sort of the respect that they had for these these knitted garments. These were obviously items of value. Yes. And you were pointing out the idea that right. the fact that they could photograph them, they're, they're still, still around. Yeah, they're still yeah. around after, you know, that's, well, almost 100 years. Yeah. They Because the, some of the photographs in the book, I don't know when the photographs were taken, right. but they were done with modern photography. Yeah. They're so... It's amazing. Well, they do have a museum. I think that a lot of yeah. this stuff is in the this committee, which I don't want to say the word again because I don't want to slaughter it again. Yeah. Um, have a, a museum that I think has these collected right. together. And as just well. the fact that you're able to write they they're able to write biographies of some of the most well known knitters means that they they really held importance in yes. the communities. Yeah. Like the, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine if you just you just couldn't get it? You couldn't knit. You'd be like ostracized I from know. it. Yeah, you would never get married. That's true. You I guess a lot of your like a lot of your culture, sort of femininity, and womanhood was based on your ability to produce these. Wow. But they also talk about the fact then that it was like you were started at your grandmother or your mother's knee when you were four years old. Right. There were certain portions that the little ones were allowed to make, certain portions of the garments that the men would make, and then there would be like sort of the elite knitters who would finish off these fine details right. and stuff too wow. so they did break it down to like what you were really, capable yes, of doing yeah okay and then yeah. we read the sad story of yeah the story the poor woman the one young that, lady yeah she made and they're the most intricate pattern of knit mittens that they have yeah. and on record yeah she yeah. Th her pattern was so intricate she lost her mind <laughs> that's right <laughs> That's what you were going with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll have to get anyway, the book it's to beautiful. read the rest yeah, of the story. It's, they're beautiful, yeah. beautiful mittens, but the story is not so happy. Yeah. yeah. The bridegroom yeah. never... Never actually made it. No, no. they didn't make it. They he married make, someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe she took too long to knit. <laughs> that would be my... Oh, shoot. There goes another one. That's still, it's a year and a half, and I'm still knitting still these knitting. freaking mittens. <laughs> I'd have to look for a one-armed bridegroom. I've got one done. Is that does that count? 
<laughs> then there's all the guests. We'd have to elope. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, you said it was cool enough now yeah. to get warm. Oh dear. Oh, and on that okay. note, on that happy yes. note, I think we're done for today. We should also mention too, the book oh, yeah. does also have, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. The book does have patterns and charts in it oh, so that yes. you can make your own mittens if you, you want. You can let them do all the hard work yes, and you can. you can now just knit up knit on up your 1.5 millimeter yeah. needles to your Or, heart or you can probably pick a different gauge. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. bet actually it might be really cool just to take one of those charts and do it like on a bigger size and you could make a motif that would be a giant motif that you could use on a sweater. I think you are onto something. Yeah. Yeah. I'd already actually kind of thought a little bit the about jet? that. Yeah. yeah that so, would be some cool. of them are really beautiful. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention too. So there was also rules about like it was different. Yeah. There, there's specific palm motifs and there's specific oh, okay. um, back of the hand motifs. Also yeah. for, so it was mittens and gloves. They oh, okay. also did gloves yeah. as well, which yeah. were those all those fingers. Yeah. I can't mm. even imagine doing gloves just in a straight stockinette stitch on a solid color. Oh, I know. I don't I think know. I'll even try that. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, have a look yep. online. Check out the book. Yeah. Check out the Wild Winds yarn. Yeah. It's all pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Betsy. Thank you. We'll see you next time. <laughs> All right. So we had a few laughs over that. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> um, I think I would be out of luck if I was a if I was a selbu knitter back in the the twenty early twentieth century. I think I would be an old maid. <laughs> anyway, that was a, that was a fun conversation. We're going to go to the shop update and we'll just kind of circle back on some of the things that we talked about earlier. So the first thing I'll talk about in the shop update is the mitten kit. So this is the mitten kit for the Ingrid mittens. So you have um, you have these uh, three colors in the mittens that you saw in the pit. I'll put another picture, the picture up here again. So you have the natural and you have the, um, the blue and the red and we have these available. These were actually going to be uh, the kits that we were supplying for the class that um, Kristen was doing at the PEI Fiber Festival. So we have um, enough kits, uh, we had made enough to, to uh, do for the whole, the whole class. And uh, so we're just gonna sell them individually now. And um, at the next Fiber Festival, we'll make, make up some other kit, who knows what kind of pattern uh, will be in the classes then. But you can buy these um, these kits uh, just with enough yarn to do those uh, those fingerless mittens, the Ingrid mittens. So that's the first thing. The next thing I'm going to show again, just to loop around, is the um, I didn't have this at the last uh, at the last um, podcast because it wasn't quite done. We need we need to. This is mostly natural undyed fiber in the Wild Winds two ply. And if you're searching for Wild Winds on our website, it is Wild Winds is all one put together as one word. And our way, our search engine on the website is a little bit picky. So if you put a space between Wild and Winds, I don't think it comes up. But you, uh, you can find them uh, just by searching. So we have these three colors of the Wild Winds two ply. And this is the yarn that uh, was uh, featured me designing it on the Fruity Knitting podcast that they just did with the PEI Fiber Festival and uh, where they talk about the festival and being here on PEI. So this is actually the finished project product. And we have um, natural white and we have uh, natural gray so these are undyed um, and then we have black which started out being natural black as well but um, we actually ran out of black fleece so what we've done is we have mixed natural black fleece but we do have to dye um, some black to mix in with the natural so that it um, so that we have enough quantities because to do the motifs you actually have to have a contrast and you need the black so just to be clear because the idea was that this was all going to be this was all this yarn was going to be 100 percent natural undyed um, what we're using to dye our all of our yarns actually is greener shade dyes 
they are formulated without any heavy metals. So they are, um, it's a, a really good color fast dye, but you can be um, comfortable knowing that they don't use any heavy metals in the, in the uh, colors. So it makes it a little bit more challenging to dye because you only have nine colors in the selection and you have to be able to mix the colors to get different, uh, different um, colors. But for us, that we've been doing that since we opened, so that's, it's all good. But um, the black, like I said, full disclosure, does have some dyed fiber in it. And um, these skeins are 200 yards for 50 grams, so they're quite fine and um, they're, they're, the texture of this yarn is quite different from our worsted and our Aran weight yarn. So the, the, um, it comes from a single flock of sheep from Wild Winds Pastures, so that's where the, names come from, the name comes from. And these sheep are a mix of old breeds and newer breeds. So there's North Country Cheviot, Coopworth, and um, Oh my goodness, I think, uh, I think that's uh, Rito Arcot in, mixed in the mix there. And um, their fleece feels quite different from the fleece that we get to make um, from our own flock and the other farmers that we buy from. So it's a very specific yarn. It has, um, it doesn't, it's not as crimpy as the yarns that we use. So it doesn't have the same kind of lockiness. So it's going to knit up in a little bit of a denser fabric, even though it's pretty fine. So uh, perfect for things that you want to keep you warm, like uh, mittens, for example. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what we're, we're doing. And it has, um, uh, it just has a denser feel to it as well. So I made, um, this was to um, give homage to the um, Norwegian yarns. And uh, so I made this uh, with a little bit tighter twist and also with, um, uh, it's a two, it's a two ply, like I said. So these are perfect for the Salbu mittens books, which we talked a lot about with, uh, with Betsy. So there we are, Wild Winds two ply. Next on the list in the shop is Morit, issue number three, and it is lovely. This is a crochet book for uh, people that uh, haven't heard of this before. This is the third issue, as I said. It comes from Scotland and um, it has uh, beautiful, beautiful patterns that, um, I mean, we should appreciate crochet just for the loveliness on its own. But, you know, sometimes people still have the feeling of granny squares and traditional crochet patterns and loopy designs and things like with uh, lacy designs. But um, these patterns that are in these editions of these books are uh, really almost imperceptible from knitting. So you have really beautiful, beautiful fabrics that are created with crochet. And uh, there's, um, I featured this on the newsletter last week and I will do, maybe I'll do a little bit of a slideshow, although the images uh, that I have access to online are not that great. But um, if I can do a slideshow, I'll insert it right here. But if I can't do a quality, get quality images to do a slideshow, then you're still listening to me talk without going to the slideshow. So, so the, um, so the book is beautiful. The projects are, are lovely. Um, you have sweaters and shawls and different designs. And there is a fantastic article in this book actually about um, when you crochet with left-handed or right-handed. And you know that Betsy and I talk about that all the time. So um, it's really, uh, it was, it's really a really good deep dive into what happens when you yarn over or yarn over when you crochet. And as a yarn over crocheter, which would be the right-handed crochet, um, there's things about the doing yarn unders instead, which would be left-handed, um, that I think you, no matter which way you yarn over or under, then you should probably look at what the other, the other way is because there's, it's a completely different fabric. So there's, the article is in this book and it's fantastic. And, um, we talked a little bit about this when we were talking about amigurumi because, um, yarn unders are usually recommended for amigurumi because it makes a little bit of a denser fabric when you're doing um, double crochets 
and double crochets in UK terms and single crochets in US terms and um, this article explains why and that she's done the writer of the article has done all of the different swatches to show the different techniques of different stitches and how they the fabrics that they make if whether you're doing yarn under or yarn over so it's really really good I have to say that these books are a little bit expensive. Um, the importing costs of getting them are um, a little bit hefty, so they are expensive, but um, I think that it's worth supporting uh, the publisher of this book because it's something really, really qualitative uh, for crocheters and you get beautiful patterns. So if you're a crocheter, and uh, you want to support uh, a publisher that is doing a great job with the the craft of crochet then um, consider consider these uh, these books even if they are a little bit on the on the pricey side so that's more it number three the next thing I'm going to talk about is there are um, some new things from Coco Knits. So Coco Knits has been talking a lot about um, the sweater care collection of products. So for they had the knitter, knitter's block, which we carry. So that's the whole big blocking kit that you can buy. And then they had shown some different pieces of other um, knitting accessories that were only available on their retail site so they've slowly been launching all of those things and I have some some really nice ones in um, there, there is one um, uh, item that people have been asking me for and it's kind of like a pop-up uh, knitwear dryer so it has like a flexible um, frame around it and a mesh inside and you kind of un fold it and you put it up and it dries your sweat it lets you dry your sweaters over the top of it that's not available yet to me wholesale so that's why I don't have it but some of the other um, knitting accessories that for um, the sweater care are available now and I've brought them in so as always Coco Knits is always using um, natural uh, um, I was going to say ingredients, natural products in their products and uh, they use wood and they use um, natural bristles and woven fabrics uh, that from cotton and things like that. So the, these, all of these items are the same and when they can't use a natural item they use recyclable materials. So the first thing that I'm going to show is actually the sweater brush and it's a beautiful beautiful um, brush for your hand um, and you've got a woven cotton strap and natural bristles and wood here and this brush is for um, building up the nap so if you have uh, knitwear that you block it and you dry it and then you just want to fluff up the nap because it has a halo then this would be the brush that you would use but it's also good for cleaning wool garments so you can use it like a like a fabric brush and uh, it will also take off lint and um, and dirt like if you just get dirt on the surface you can use it for that and it's just um, just feels lovely in your hand so that's the sweater care brush that's the first thing I wanted to show oh, I lost the tag here the next thing I wanted to show is this which looks like a razor but it's a comb for your sweater and it's I it's really super cool kind of a retro look it's made from uh, recyclable materials and you use it just uh, on your sweater like this to take off any pills and I don't have a lot of pills on this sweater but um, I had Ken uh, Ken was going out the other day and had on a sweater that had a, quite a um, bit of pilling underneath the arm and uh, I used this on uh, on him and it's called the fuzz off comb and it's brilliant I have to say it's really really nice it's super cool because it looks like like I said like a razor um, the quality of this is is lovely and it's very effective so it just has um, it actually looks like a blade with um, teeth but you just put it across your um, across your garment and just at a slight angle and it just takes off all of the all of the fuzz like I said I don't have a lot here but you can just see how I'm using it and it's as easy as that you just lay your sweater out and really do it so that's the fuzz off comb and that's new so we have those in stock 
Um, and then the next thing is there is the um, bag. So there's a wash bag. So this is also made out of recyclable material. This is actually the small size and there is a large size as well. So I'm trying to give you, I think you can fit something fairly substantial in this one, but small and then large for big sweaters. And it's just like a, like a lingerie bag, only it has a, a, like a fully closable zipper. It closes all the way up. You even have a little tab here to tuck the, the zipper uh, in so nothing gets, gets caught on anything. And uh, it opens nice and wide and you can put your, your garments in there. Like I said, large and small, and this is the small size. And, um, that is oh yes and then there was one more item which i think was kind of funny um, i don't want to open this because they're sealed but there's also a set of emery boards and i showed this on the last newsletter and i was like emery boards for knitting what, what would you use well if you've ever snagged your nail on a really fine yarn then you can understand why you might want to have an emery board in your knitting kit but also you can use them to um, uh, clean little areas of a, a densely knit uh, dently, densely knit knit fabric so there's the emery boards and they're really joyful and cute i don't know if you can really see the colors there but i don't want to open them so there's also the emery boards and um the other thing i've been busy about in the shop is looking for a couple new things so as everybody knows, I absolutely love Chiagu needles to knit with. I knit with the stainless steel needles, the twist ones, and um, they, Chiagu does carry good quality bamboo needles as well. However, I just, I find that the bamboo are, um, the joins are different because the cords are different. So they use a nylon, a nylon cord and the join, it spin, the cord spins inside the join. And I just find that for really fine knitting, it's not, um, not quite the same as the red cords. Now you can use the red cords from Chiago on the bamboo needles, but I just, I just wanted to look at what else is out there. And I have um, in one of my suppliers, I came across uh, the brand called Kinky Emma Berry and it's from Japan and they have all kinds of different products. They, they have knitting needles as well. And ironically, I didn't buy the knitting needles, but I think I'm thinking about bringing them in. So if uh, anybody is familiar with um, Kinky, Kinky Emma Berry and they've used their bamboo knitting needles, then let me know. We did do a test with some here so uh, that they passed the test as far as the quality goes. They feel really, really nice in your hand, but I haven't purchased them yet. But um, Kinky Emma Berry makes like a sub brand called C Knit, and they have a lot of knitting accessories that are under that brand. So I have brought in some of the beautiful things that they have. I just love the aesthetic of this company. So for example, you have these beautiful little kits and they're actually kits to knit a Christmas ornament. And um, this one is for a mitten and in the kit you have these little tiny this little tiny blocker oh it's uh attached in there so it doesn't fall out i don't know if you can see this so you have a little blocker you have the little tiny ball of yarn to make the mitten and the pattern is in here and then you have little tiny knitting needles that make an ornament so little pins and the kit makes the, the mitten that goes on the blocker and then a little tiny ball of yarn with needles in it uh, for a charm. And they actually give you the double pointed needles inside the kit as well. So you have uh, the uh, is it five, yeah, five double pointed needles and everything you need. So this one, like I said, is a mitten. Comes in this beautiful packaging, which looks like a book. And just everything that they do is just beautiful they and they use a lot of paper for their packaging and everything so it's very 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 lovely and i also have a sock one so you have the, oops, nope you all have the stocking and again you've got the little block stock knit blocker 
and you have the ball of yarn and the needles and everything that you need and you make a chain uh, you can make a charm out of this one as well and the patterns are there so I have those two uh, that you can they'd actually you could knit uh, an ornament to give to somebody or you could actually give a knitter the kit and they it's a, as a gift and it's a lovely a lovely gift so they had that they also have knitting accessories and um, these are bamboo darning needles and I brought those in and they also have um, really lovely tapestry needles that I've purchased as well to bring in so you can see those in my shop and they have other things that I'll start bringing in uh, a couple pieces at a time. And uh, since my test knitter has tested the, the needles, I think I'm gonna start bringing in some of their bamboo needles as well. While we're on the topic of needles, we also have, um, uh, we, I was looking at the, um, the Salbu Mittens book and somebody was buying the yarn for the Salbu Mittens book and I realized that they require a really small needle size. So we talked about it with Betsy. So now um, I'm just going to show you how the, what the carbons from knit, uh, Knitter's Pride look like. So they're really, these are the ones that like I said are like a pencil lid. They're really, really small. So if you're doing really small gauge knitting, uh, we now have needles. Chiago, as I said in the piece with uh, Betsy, only goes down to two millimeter. So the Knitter's Pride carbons will be carried here in our store for the smaller sizes. And that's not all. I also um, purchased some, I don't know if I've talked about uh, measuring tapes before uh, but I'm really I'm kind of particular about measuring tape so I like it to have a fabric or a, a totally flexible one I like it to, to stop and I like it to be fully retractable and the fact that it's absolutely beautiful on the outside is just a bonus and this are these are measuring tapes by Bohin so Bohin is a French company and they just make these beautiful uh, floral measuring tapes. So you have the rose, you have lily of the valley, and you have sunflower, which are all flowers that you have around PEI. But there is also uh, three more motifs and I have those in the shop now as well. So if you're looking for a really good measuring tape that's abs absolutely beautiful and lovely to use, then uh, we have those in the shop. And I think that's all that I had on my list for the shop. So that's quite a, quite a lot. And um, like I said, just to remind you, I'm using Selkirk Worsted for my um, cowl for Scandi work. So uh, you can check out our Selkirk Worsted selection. Uh, we have, I think we have close to 100 colors and they're always in stock because if we don't have them already dyed, then we'll dye them for you when you place your order. So you can check that out. The next thing I'm going to talk about is Arn and Carlos and um, this will be uh, there'll be one more podcast before Arn and Carlos but we're really down to the uh, the short strokes now on on uh, Arn and Carlos and there are still a few tickets like very few for sit and knit a bit live which will be on November 29th and there are still a couple tickets left for the primrose uh, crochet class and you can, um, like I said in the last podcast, that if you're a very beginner crochet and have never crocheted before, it's okay for you to take that class because they're going to actually teach you how to crochet. So you can uh, check out the website for tickets for those two, uh, those two events. Um, if there's something that you really want, the other uh, classes are, so I think there's one or two tickets left of the color work, uh, stranded color work class where you make the Christmas ornament. Um, then and but the layered uh, color work and the knit and purl like a Norwegian are both sold out for the stranded color work um, class you uh, we actually are making a Christmas ornament and the Christmas ornament class I will be bringing um, the stuffing for you so you don't need to worry a lot of people have been asking if I'm bringing yarn. I will be bringing yarn. So the yarns that I'm bringing to the to the hotel for the class are the Rowan Felted Tweed 
the Norwegian wool, which was uh, designed with Arne and Carlos. And I will be bringing the kids silk haze as well. And I think I have room to bring a couple other brands that they knit with, but I'm just not sure exactly what, what, else, I'm, uh, what else I'm bringing. But those three main yarns will be available at the hotel to purchase. I'll also let you uh, remind you that we have um, all of the books that Arne and Carlos have published either with Rowan or outside of Rowan with their own publisher and you can purchase those. Uh, Arne and Carlos will sign books at the end of Sit and Knit a Bit Live and you can, uh, you can order the books if you're coming to the event and you want me to bring them to the event then um, you can select for local pickup when you order. If you're from out of the province and you have a shipping address which is outside of PEI, local pickup, um, you have to make sure when you're ordering and you're in your cart, you're confirming your shipping address, you want to just remove the shipping address. Don't put the shop as your shipping address, just remove your, your mailing address and a local pickup will be an option for you and you can click local pickup and I'll bring all of those orders to the event on the 29th of November. So they'll be there before the sit and knit a bit live. I think that's it for them. So the final thing in the podcast is the harmony part. And since we started the podcast with the with horses, we're going to finish the podcast with horses. And I titled this harmony part Wild Horses, which doesn't really sound very harmonious. And um, trust me, uh, nobody was harmed in the filming of this because they come, uh, the horses come awfully close to Ken while he was, fil <laughs> was filming them. But uh, they were having a great day. We let them loose in uh, a lower field that they hadn't been in uh, uh, all summer. And they were having a fantastic day. And I just think there's something so majestic and motivating about horses run. And uh, so I am going to invite you to watch our two crazy horses when they get into a new field and, and they're having lots of fun and enjoy the harmony part so you're going to listen to some great music um, take a few minutes just to relax and uh, may the next two weeks be wonderful and joyous in your crafting and I wish you all the best until we see you in two weeks time thanks bye Thank you.